what's up everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here I have the Bleed Blazestorm Gladiator that I've been using to do most content in the game, except for Ubers, but it's been a real blast and super strong as well for both damage and defense. Blades are quite easy to scale and for defense being the Gladiator with max block is just crazy good while mapping at least. And uh, I started this character with the Bleed Spectral Shield Throw and even though that build is also really strong, especially as a League starter, uh, this was uh, the next step in to scale up the Bleed damage I felt. And we're using the transfigured version of Bladestorm which gives us huge damage multiplier to Bleed damage. And by using this we are not forced to be in blood stance as the normal version is which is a quite nice quality of life as we are using blood medic with this build. And uh, you can also go ahead and play Lazarate of Hemorrhage with this build if you like as well. It uh, uses the same links and passive tree but uh, for me personally I don't really like uh, the feel of the skill with the mapping and the uh, blaze storm just feels uh, a lot better in my opinion. And uh, with this current setup, I'm currently a bit over 6 million bleed DPS on the Blade Storm. And with Lacerate, we can get up to a bit over 9 million. So it is a bit of a difference here. But uh, as mentioned, for mapping, Blade Storm just feels a lot more better, uh, especially for clearing. But it can be good to know that you can easily exchange uh, to the other one if you like to, to get even higher damage output. A really nice build overall, you will scale the damage quite high here and you also get quite tanky uh, with the new changes to Versatile Combatant and this got changed and now only reduced 10% to max chance to block attack and spells and also provide plus 2 chance to block spell damage for each overcap chance to block attack damage. And uh, with this it's really easy to get uh, to block cap and combining this with the gladiators more than skill that will uh, provide luck block and makes us uh, basically stay at around 88% block for both attack and spells if we have a block recently and basically making ourselves unkillable while doing maps as well as get some extra life when we get blocks here as well from the block mastery in our passive tree. Unwavering stance is another quality of life to have uh, providing stun immunity but this also makes us unable to evade enemy attacks but uh, with that much block and recovery from this basically mitigates the downside of this. Bleeding or bleeds is an ailment that deals physical damage over time and moving targets will take increased bleeding damage. And by using the Tempest Rising Boots makes enemies in your present count as moving while affected by an elemental ailment and uh, so this really helps out for enemies to stand still a lot. And especially for bosses, for example, that don't really move much at all, it really will just boost the bleed damage from these boots alone, basically providing you uh, three times the damage from this. And this also opens up a ascendancy point from the Gladiator Ascendancy, as we don't need to be specced into Jagged Technique anymore, and uh, can get some more damage from Word of Attention, for example. The boost also makes our bleed damage deal faster as well here, which is something that you really want to get as high as possible on these boots. Then the pressure is the unique ring that you need to have for this build, and combining these with the boots works as we need to have an ailment on us to uh, the boots to work. And we have a 25% chance to cause bleed here uh, to ourselves with this ring. And once we do so, we also get shield at the same time. So this will enable the boots for us. And the ring also gives some uh, increased damage to bleeds as well. And this can also be improved even more by adding noxious catalysts to it as well. And on the side of Unique's Rislata's Coil, huge damage multiplier for the build as you get more damage multiplier to the max physical attack damage with this belt. And the uh, same as the ring here, you can improve this stat as well uh, by adding Noxious Catalyst on the belt. And the Blaze Storm is a melee attack and with that we have to scale our damage from our weapon. And you have some different options that you can make here. And by default bleed duration is 5 seconds and the target can have one bleed on them at a time. And the highest hit that you will deal will then overwrite the previous bleed that was applied. So you basically just want as high physical damage as you can get on your weapon here. 
Jack the Axe is a solid option if you're just starting out as you get some bonuses to bleed overall with this weapon and also the Thirst of Blood skill which uh, gives you even more damage to bleed um, but the base itself has quite low base damage but it is a nice starter weapon. And if you want to craft a axe for yourself, a reverse axe base is the one that you want to go for as it provides the highest flat damage. I went with the Elder Influence on my one here and the reason that we went for this is that you can get up to a 59% damage over time multiplier for bleeds from hits with this weapon as a prefix. But uh, I didn't hit it on my weapon here uh, sadly, but it's really strong. And you can also craft in, uh, as I have here, even more uh, physical damage of a time multiplier as an extra suffix. And uh, for this weapon I spammed SSL's Condemned until I got a decent fist roll. And I also managed to get attack speed on it here as well. But uh, attack speed don't really scale the damage overall for the bleeds. But it do improve uh, the, just the quality of life of the build. You get some extra movement speed from your mobility skill and stuff like that. It's just uh, really nice to have just a little bit of attack speed, but it's not needed for the build. Another option is a Warlord base, and here you can get a hybrid fist and attack speed as a Warlord prefix. And there is uh, actually a way to guarantee hitting the hybrid fist by blocking off the suffixes on a weapon here. And uh, then you want to do a speed craft with harvest, but it is going to be RNG on uh, how high the tier will be on that. So you might get unlucky or you will get lucky, but by blocking off the suffixes on the item this will cost you a couple of devices as well. So do keep that in mind. If you're in trade you might just be better off just buying a finished axe instead. And with the Caligar Lee we can also add increased physical damage as a implicit on the weapons as well. For even more damage as it scales uh, the base of the axe here and uh, remember that quality is uh, stronger than ever with these new changes here as well. Getting a axe with uh, over 20 quality can be very expensive as the uh, bleed builds overall is uh, quite a meta on this league. And why are we using an axe you might wonder. Well we actually get quite a bit of bonuses from the passive tree with the axe equipped. Here we get the chance to gain onslaught on kill. It doesn't really help with the damage, but the attack speed and movement speed from this is really nice to have. And by using the axe monster here as well, we are getting bleeds. Inflicts 50% faster from this, which will in increase the damage by quite a bit. And then lastly, another axe monster here for the increased damage while in the blood stance. And uh, this is a bit uh, weird actually, but uh, how it works is that uh, some skills like Bladestorm, Peripherate, Lacerate, that uh, works different depending on the stats you're in. And uh, what I understand is that the dev made it so blood stats is uh, by default on for some reason. So it do actually get applied to this even when we don't have uh, blood stats on us. So yeah, it's a bit weird as I mentioned, but... Um, that's how it is it seems. You can check it out for yourself in the PUB later if you like to. And if you take a look on the rest of the gear here, it's uh, kind of the same as the SST version, but uh, now we have instead just removed the spell suppress from the gear and we just focus on getting life and chaos resist here. And the basis is really important and stronger than ever now with the new hybrid armor and evasion basis that works great. While we have the iron reflex that will convert all evasion rating to armor, it's just a uh, huge quality now and you get so much armor from this and with the perfect conquest body armor you can get over 6k armor from this alone which is just crazy and uh, I usually try to get a body armor uh, without a life roll on it because uh, then we can use the life monster here which will give us 15% increased maximum life if we have no life modifiers on our body armor. And for the amulet, it's mostly for stats and it can be a quite hard to get the dexterity and intelligence uh, for this build. But uh, once you get it, Essence of Contempt for this amulet, just for the physical damage to attacks. And uh, if you are lucky, you can also get the damage over time multiplier on the amulet as well. 
and uh, I went with uh, a Chromedy Anoint for the extra damage of a time player here as it's uh, quite cheap. You could also go for a uh, Veteran Soldier. It's 15% uh, physical damage over time and you get the extra 25 to maximum life here. But uh, this do cost a golden oil, so it's a little bit more expensive. And for the ring, I went with the same that I have for my SST. And this ring have the Betrayal mod on it with the global physical damage. And it's uh, really nice to have as it applies to both the hit from the Blade Storm and this also will apply to the bleeds then later on as well. And also the explosions that we get from our Ascendancy. And the shield is another thing that you can experiment a little bit with. And here we went with the Crusader mod that provide increased damage per block to attack damage. And then also Chaos Resist, Life and also reduce critical damage taken. And we also picked up a extra 30% uh, from the armor monster here as well. So this makes us almost immune to critical strikes only currently at uh, 88% here. You could get the extra from the body armor if you like to, but I feel that this is enough. And the great thing here is that the Crusader mod is actually guaranteed to get if you use a Crusader Exalt on a non-influenced item. So you can go with uh, like me here for the reduced uh, critical strike chance on the shield. You can go for avoid ailments here as well. Or you can even go for spell suppress if you like to. And as long as you have an open prefix and then you just buy the base or craft it yourself. And then you just slam the exalt on the shield here and you will guaranteed get the damage from block mod on the shield. Really good to use but the exalts do cost around one divine so do keep that in mind. But it's a really nice way to get this as it's guaranteed. Another choice is to use a Shaper or Warlord base as you can get recovery up to 5% of life when you block which is super good for this build as you basically block all of the time but I do feel that you don't really need it as it's mostly useful while you are mapping anyways and I have not felt any need to uh, get one as of now with this setup and I'm currently at 97 with this build. And for our flaws, we're using a Divine Life Flash with instant recovery from this and also with some bleed removal if we would need it. We have a Quicksilver, a Basalt, a Granite and also a Sulfur Flask. Sulfur for damage, Granite with the, the added armor and then we have Basalt for the more armor and the Quicksilver movement speed, right? And all of these have gained charges when you are hit by an enemy and this works uh, really great with uh, the unwavering stance, right? That makes us contemplate enemy attacks, but we also can't get stunned. So we get charges each time we are getting hit. We have some extra movement speed here. We have increased armor on here as well, and then reduce effect of shocks on this one here. And I got a pretty decent roll on the sulfur flask here. And uh, this basically makes us immune to poison, right? So I got uh, the immunity to poison with the increased duration here and I just uh, felt like this was uh, great to have. But uh, if you like to you can go for uh, the gain charges on this as well and then maybe get like reduce uh, curse effect is another great thing to have here. The build is capped on chaos resist though so it uh, isn't too big of a problem. But if we take a look on our pantheons here, we're using Soul of the Brian King and this is basically for uh, the freeze avoidance, so we don't get freeze. And then we are using Soul of Abrath here and this is uh, so we get some less duration of ignites on us and also unaffected by burning ground, just one less degen to worry about. And degen is going to be the thing that this build is uh, really lacking defense of. And if you are struggling with poison, you can use Soul of Shakari instead here. You get less uh, duration of poison on you and you can't get the poisons while there are at least three poisons on you. Quite nice there. And also get some extra reduced uh, chaos damage over time taken as well here. And for the bandits, I saved Elura, and that's for the all elemental resist that you get from it. 15%. Uh, but you the builder do starve on resist I feel and can be hard to get them to the cap but if you manage to get it then you can just go and change this to uh, a passive point instead but elemental resist is just uh, really nice to have I feel. 
And if you take a look on the passive skill tree here, it's uh, really simple, really, but let's go over the most important nodes, right, that we are using. Versatile Combatant, this is for easy block cap. We have Iron Reflexes, converts all elevation rating to armor, really strong for us. We have uh, Unwavering Stance, cannot evade enemy attacks, but we get cannot be stunned. And uh, Resolute Technique, really strong. This makes us so we can't avoid hits, right? So we always hit our bleed, but we don't deal any crits. But that's nothing that we have to worry about. Other than that, we're picking up the Axe Monster here. I went over the Axe here. And this notes right here, Deflection, gives us some chance to get Endurance Shard when we block. And also the Block Monster here, we get the Life here when we block. Really strong defensive mechanic. We have the bleed wheel over here and also the one over here and uh, some extra block for this as well and this also will increase the max block with the uh, attack and that will boost that up uh, to 90% with lucky block. Uh, the build uses two cluster jewels and you want to go for increased physical damage on these and just try to get as much fist as you can on these passive notes here. I have Iron Breaker over here, we have Fierce Assault, that's 25 and 30. I have a better one up here. So we have Force Multiplier, that's 25%. And the Monster of Fundamental is probably the best one here. We get the 35% increased physical damage and also 10 to all element resist, really nice to have. And Iron Breaker here as well, 30% increased physical damage. Try to get two of these ones and uh, you are good to go. For the normal jewels, nothing crazy here. Uh, physical damage over time is what you want to look for. I got the one with Corrupted Blood on us as well here. And other than that, all attributes is nice. Physical damage over time is nice and max life. That's basically what you want to aim for. Global physical damage also really good to have here as it scales both the bleed and the hit damage from our weapon and uh, even the explosions from our ascendancy. And you can also look for resist here, uh, really great to get yourself to cap as you can struggle a bit with this. And let's take a look on our PB for a bit here. And uh, as you can see we have quite a bit of effective hit pool but that's pretty normal for a gladiator that's using block right. And uh, fist hits are quite low and the elemental is all right from here and uh, yeah we are capped basically and we have around 6 million dps of now and just to give you an example here here is the less rate of hemorrhage that you can change to if you like to and let's see yeah here just around 9 million with this one and here's the blade storm and that's uh, the difference between the two, right? But let's check on our links here. We're using Bladestorm, and that's going to be the Bladestorm of Uncertainty here. We want to link this with the Deadly Ailments, Sweet Affliction, Melee Physical Damage, Brutality, and then also Volatility. I do have a setup with the new Retaliation skills here, Eviscerate. This with Expert Retaliation, Brutality, and also Melee Physical Damage. And I haven't used this skill too much actually, but it do uh, have those situations where you get like basically stuck and you can't really reach the target, right? And this is where Eviscerate really comes in handy here. You could change this out to and add something with MAME support and also with Culling Strike. That's something that I haven't added to the build right now, but you could use this uh, instead of this actually if you want to. We have a Pride with Eternal Blessing setup, and this is because we are in a Blood Stance, and this basically gives the Pride uh, Aura, which will be free then for us, or it will not take up any of our life, basically. So this is for more physical damage. We have a Flame Dash, and that's just for instant cost if we would need it. Uh, other than that, we are using Shield Charge for our mobility skill, and it is going to be linked with faster attacks. We have a war cry, endurance cry, and this is going to be to get some endurance charges. And we do get some region as well, but mostly to get our endurance charges if we would need it. Urgent order, just yes, so we can get some increased war cry speed for the war cry. 
We're using War Banner. This will give us just uh, more damage, right? More physical damage here when we put it down. And uh, this is going to be for bosses. We have a Vitality for some extra life regen. Vulnerability for a Curse. This makes so the enemy take increased physical damage. We also have a setup with Molten Strike, Blood Rage, Moderation and Automation. So we don't really have to worry about it. And Blood Rage is going to be the thing that gives us Frenzy Charges when we kill an enemy. Animal Strike just for some extra defense, right? And if you take a look on our sensor here, we are going with the Gladiator. And uh, Gracious Violence is uh, really helping out while doing maps. Bleeding enemies you kill explode, dealing 20% of their maximum life as physical damage. So we get those explosions going around when we're doing uh, maps, basically. Nice quality of life to have. Uh, as we don't need Jagged Technique, as we are using the boots, we can now choose to go with War of Attrition. And this makes us deal 1% more damage with hits and elements to rare and unique enemies for each second they have been in your presence, up to a maximum of 100%. So basically, if you stay here for 100 seconds, you get uh, double your damage basically. And it uh, can be really good for some of the bosses that uh, really takes uh, quite a lot of time. But uh, yeah... Just uh, something that's great to have, basically. Determined Survivor gives us 50% chance to block from equipped shield instead of the shield's value. And this basically do so uh, whatever the block value on your shield is, you will get 50% no matter what. Really nice to have. And then more than skill, uh, the big one here, chance to block attacks and spell damage is lucky if you block recently. This just really push those block numbers up quite a bit and basically make us unkillable while mapping. So what do you think about the Bleed Blazestorm Gladiator? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!